Hello, and welcome to Yodo. I'm Dr. Sarah Bone. The information I'm providing today is on a huge topic, and it's one that strikes the fear in the minds and hearts of nearly every patient and healthcare worker. When a bad outcome happens because of a medical error, that is a sentinel event. I will define a sentinel event, give you some information about reporting, and elaborate on a few specific examples relative to palliative and hospice patients. As the information on sentinel events is extensive, I will not be covering everything in one video. I will break this up in a few sessions. The topic is sort of like the blob that ate New York. It's a huge topic and it can be difficult to get a hold of. The measures of precaution that are taken to prevent a sentinel event are extensive and they are resource consuming. It involves many disciplines. For sure, there is a risk management team, but also involved are administrators, aides, nursing staff, physicians, and pharmacists. But some staff that you might not even consider that participate in the efforts to provide patient safety include statisticians, software engineers, programmers, design specialists, and even builders, and many more. These efforts are all aimed to improve patient safety processes by analyzing these processes, and it's for a good reason. We don't want these events to occur, ever. We want all patients to be safe in the medical setting. These people are monitoring processes and protocols on an ongoing basis. It's an exercise without end, as the staff members involved are either reviewing a process because it is due, or because of a breakthrough in technology, or some other industry change, the team is running a drill, or because an event has occurred. And that's what we're going to talk about. For my patient population, folks with a serious illness who have had a sentinel event, it is even more likely for them to be exposed to a potentially lethal outcome. Safety throughout medicine requires the efforts of many, and this includes the patient and their loved ones. It also requires balance. The precautions that are institute cannot completely limit a patient's rights or choices. All of this effort is to prevent errors. The goal is to achieve a rate of zero on medical errors. So let's get through some basics. A sentinel event is an adverse event resulting in harm or a near miss of harm. The patient care needs after the incident are addressed immediately, of course, but when one of these types of incidents occurs, it also requires a rapid and well-orchestrated investigation behind the scenes of the patient and family into the circumstances that surrounded the event. That's why these have been named sentinel events, because it demands for an expedited scrutiny and a deep dive investigation into the factors that led to the incident. The people involved in the evaluation review the processes that failed. There's a reason that the event occurred and the aim is to find it. When we know all about the event, we can determine if there is something that we humans can control. We want to do all that we possibly can to mitigate the risk so that the repeat of a similar event does not ever occur. A root cause analysis is often immediately started. Any event that results in a bad outcome, whether the harm is temporary, a near miss, or permanent, and certainly when a death occurs, it calls for this comprehensive evaluation to be performed. Now to look at the big picture of the incidents being evaluated. Examples of sentinel events include falls that result in injury, medication safety, elopement, an unanticipated death within 48 hours of treatment or a certain number of days of a hospitalization, a patient suicide that has occurred in a healthcare setting, and there are multiple concerns related to surgical or the procedural setting. Procedures or surgeries that have events related to them receive considerable media attention. You've probably heard news reports in the past about occurrences of wrong site, wrong procedure, wrong patient, or an object being left inside of a patient. These are a few of the many types of sentinel events that we want to eliminate. Everyone in healthcare goes to an extreme measure to try to prevent these from happening. Sentinel events are specifically unrelated to the bad outcomes caused by a patient's illness. Things that happen to a patient as a part of the disease process and its progression are not sentinel events. We are mortal, disease processes advance, and people die. Disease progression related outcomes are not included as sentinel events. Event reporting includes close calls. This process of monitoring makes it possible to identify areas for improvement. Existing processes in healthcare are constantly being refined to look for preventive measures and or corrective actions. The goal is to review processes and look at protocols to avoid or minimize the risk as much as possible. Providing health care is inherently complicated and that process cannot be overly simplified. 
However, with monitoring, investigations, and analysis of near-miss and adverse events, it helps us minimize the number of events that are occurring as we continue to try to drive that number of Sentinel events to zero. Everyone plays a part in the responsibility to report a close call or an adverse event. Sentinel events are reported at multiple levels, not just locally, but also to the Joint Commission. JCO is a nonprofit organization that accredits healthcare organizations and programs. Healthcare institutions pay the Joint Commission to come and inspect their facilities, review the processes, as well as audit, discuss, and witness routine care methods of the clinical staff. JCO not only accredits healthcare organizations, but they analyze data and set standards for the organizations to meet. The reach of the Joint Commission throughout healthcare is vast and includes ambulatory care sites, assisted living communities, behavioral health settings, critical access hospitals, home health labs, nursing homes, surgery centers, rural health clinics, telehealth, hospitals, and more. The Joint Commission accreditation is voluntary, and only about 20% of the hospitals are not accredited by them in the United States. It is expensive to obtain and maintain that accreditation. Therefore, a small number of institutions or organizations are unable to afford that cost. The direct cost of accreditation is based on the hospital size, the services that they provide, and the number of patients that are cared for. There are hidden costs of accreditation by the Joint Commission as organizations must have a dedicated staff with specialized training requirements that have been met to facilitate the writing of those standard operating procedures, that they uh, perform mock inspections to prepare for a JCO visit, and they are constantly vigilant to monitor for changes in regulations. JCO has surprise inspections, and these surveys will pull many staff members away from their regular responsibilities during the visit. This can wreak havoc for many facilities that might already be suffering with staffing shortages. When facilities do not have Joint Commission accreditation, they are unable to bill federal payers such as Medicare or Medicaid, and that can carry many other financial repercussions because sometimes other insurances will not pay an institution or a provider that Medicare and Medicaid do not pay. Thus, the savings of not having accreditation carries limitations on reimbursement. The steps in reporting are many. The facility must report these within one business day of the occurrence. The event is disclosed to the hospital leadership and the process of event evaluation is begun. There is disclosure to the patient and their surrogate and that's to be completed in a timely and sensitive manner. Many organizations often provide emotional support to the patient and their loved ones. You might be surprised to learn that some now also extend that emotional support to the staff that are involved in the incident. Healthcare staff have a higher emotional risk than nearly every other industry and the burnout rate is unacceptably high. The next step in event reporting, the event is detailed in a report that is submitted to the regulatory body, which may be more than just joint commission. The submitted report will protect the patient's privacy and focus on the facts. This process involves the risk management service and the quality improvement team of the institution as well as many others. Let's backtrack a bit to an important phrase that I used, root cause analysis. This is a structured investigating process to determine the factors that led to an adverse event. This is a big undertaking and the team members are usually made up of those that are uninvolved in the specific event, but most members will have some understanding of the process that was faulty. All information regarding the event is gathered, the issues defined as the data is collected. This leads the team to uncover all factors that contributed to the issue. The team will speak to those involved during the fact finding. They'll walk through the area to search for physical or structural contributors to the event. All of this is addressed quickly after the event so that the team can replicate what happened during their walkthrough and gather all data possible before the information is lost, misplaced, or forgotten. The purpose of this activity is to eliminate the likelihood that this would ever occur again. It is to focus on the why and make the necessary changes for prevention. There are many different techniques used to get to the bottom of an event, and the five whys is one that is commonly used. This is pretty much asking why five times to lead the investigating team to find many contributors to that problem. I avoid the word error as that can imply a person. Organizations have found that a system failure has occurred, not the people performing the work. 
Therefore, a key component of the process is to avoid blame. Many healthcare organizations have embraced the concept of highly reliable organizations. This thinking process is from the University of Berkeley in the late 1970s. The theory is that accidents are inevitable for industries involved in high-risk activities, such as power plants, the power grid, air traffic control, the nuclear industry, and this culture has expanded into healthcare. For success, leaders must be committed for transformation into an HRO culture. This is a philosophy of safety for all and available willingness to allow for process improvement and adopting change. One of my most disliked phrases, that's the way we've always done it. These organizations, these HRO institutions, put resources into the belief that failure is to be anticipated. They exhibit awareness to the systems and the processes that the staff use. Also unique to these organizations is that they prioritize and respect the input from the frontline staff, the people that are actually performing the work. This results in the staff and the work that they do that they feel like they are appreciated and valued by the organization for the purpose of that organization. These organizations have a goal and it's an effort to achieve an error rate of zero while performing the task of that agency. The company instills resilience into the staff so that they can bounce back after an incident does occur. The concept behind this is actually a small one. Each day we are better than the day before. Every person is working each day to improve a process. If you have been to a hospital or a clinic in the past few years, you have no doubt encountered how every process is refined and has multiple safety checkpoints. We strive for each patient care event to be completed exactly the same way. It's not intended to cause boredom, but to reduce the variability from event to event that has led to an error. This complicated process is to result in lessons learned from a bad event with the goal for that system change to be allowed to prevent the repeat of a similar problem. The next video will be more information about Sentinel events, and I will go into some specific examples of a few. Any event resulting from a process error that results in bad outcome for a patient is going to be scrutinized. The goal of evaluation is to protect the patient, visitors, staff, and even vendors that are on site for their responsibilities. Organizations have a highly trained team with protocols on how to approach the crisis of a Sentinel event. There are multiple standard procedures and policies regarding the preservation of patient safety and prevention of any errors. This is an important part of healthcare, and these protective processes help keep patients safe. Thank you for your interest and promoting learning. I appreciate you being here. Bye now.